Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to go through um, our review together. Just make sure that you understood everything and go over the information one more time. So we're going to be going through your study guide and reviewing all the information for your test tomorrow. Number one says, according to the Declaration of Independence, the government is centered around blank. Now, in the Declaration, we see that it says to secure these that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. So the answer to that one is that the government is centered around the people. Number two, the Declaration of Independence was written to claim blank from blank blank. In the Declaration, we read, The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. So we see that this Declaration of Independence was written to the country of Great Britain. So the answer is the Declaration of Independence was written to claim independence from Great Britain. Number three says, What are the three listed certain unalienable rights in the Declaration? Well, we read that straight from the Declaration. It says that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are our answers. Number four says the government should get its power from blank. And in the Declaration, again, it says that to secure these rights, the governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. So the answer is from the people, because we are the ones being governed. Number five, unalienable rights means rights that cannot be what? According to John Locke's philosophy of natural law, men have natural rights that can't be taken away. And in the Declaration, we call these unalienable rights. So the answer is that unalienable rights means rights that cannot be taken away. Number six, if the government is not doing what's right, the people should blank the government. The Declaration said that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government. So the short answer for that is saying that the people should change the government. Number seven says the government is made or established to protect the people's what? That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. So the answer to that one is the governments are made or established to protect people's rights. Number eight is the type of government that the Declaration of Independence is supported is not a monarchy, but a blank government. Um, the monarchy is when you have a king that's in charge of the government. The type of government that the Declaration of Independence is talking about is run by the people, and this is called a democracy, so it's a democratic government. Number nine says, which philosopher came up with the concept of unalienable rights? John Locke was the one that came up with this concept through his philosophy of what he called natural rights. So the answer to that is John Locke. Number ten was fill in the blank. And it should say, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Number 11 asks, who wrote most of the Declaration of Independence? There was a committee of men that worked on the Declaration of Independence, and a lot of feedback was given by all of the different representatives for the colonies, but Thomas Jefferson was considered the main author and wrote the first draft of the Declaration. So the answer to that is Thomas Jefferson. The next question was, how old was he when he helped write the Declaration of Independence? Thomas Jefferson was two years younger than I am. He was only 33 when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. The next one says, how many colonies were represented at the First Continental Congress? During the First Continental Congress, 12 out of the 13 colonies were represented. Georgia was the only colony that didn't send a representative, so the answer to that is 12. And then during the Second Continental Congress, how many colonies were represented? That's the last question on our study guide. And at the Second Continental Congress, all of the colonies sent representatives, and that means that there were 13 colonies represented at the Second Continental Congress. That is going to be it for our review. I hope that that helped you, and I hope that you do great on your test tomorrow, and I will see you all next week. Bye.